My name is Taylor, and in this lesson, we're going to learn about the European Age of Exploration, the explorers who connected Europe to North and South America, and the culture of the indigenous people who occupied the existing land. Let's go! Historians refer to the Age of Exploration as a period of time ranging from the early 1400s through the 1600s CE, when European nations began exploring the world. During this time, European explorers found new routes to India, much of the Far East, and the Americas. When we're learning about history, it's important that we practice switching our perspective or point of view to the various groups of people whom we're learning about. Let's start with an example. Imagine you are at your favorite park and you notice that there's something lying in the grass. You walk over, reach down, and discover the coolest gadget you've ever seen. It feels like your lucky day. You are so excited to have found this treasure. You don't see anyone around, so you decide to bring it home and it becomes your new favorite toy. Across the park, there's another child. They were playing in the grass when the gadget fell from their pocket. They have looked all over the park for this special toy, but can't find it anywhere. Your lucky day feels like their worst day. Your gain of this new gadget comes as a result of their loss. Both people in the same park will have a different point of view about the event that transpired. You may be wondering, what in the world does this have to do with the European age of exploration in the Americas? Throughout this lesson, we will be switching perspectives to gain a better understanding of the various groups of people involved in this age of exploration. Studying various points of view in history gives us a better understanding of what actually happened. Now, let's begin with the perspective of Portugal during the European age of exploration. During the early 1400s, Prince Henry, who is often also referred to as Henry the Navigator, funded and encouraged exploration and the study of navigation. The definition of navigation is the act or practice of steering, directing the course of, or finding a way through. Portuguese explorers began venturing southward along the Atlantic coast of Africa. At the time, Africa was rich in a variety of foods, gold, and spices, including salt. Yes, salt. Salt has been an extremely valuable commodity throughout history. A commodity is a raw material or primary agricultural product that can be bought and sold. Salt not only flavors food, but also acts as a preservative, meaning it prevents the food from decaying. The refrigerator wasn't invented until the 1800s, so most human civilizations throughout history have had to rely on natural preservation processes, like the use of salt, especially when preserving meat. The Portuguese first returned from their journey to Africa in 1420 with a variety of spices and gold. The Portuguese explorers also returned with enslaved people, who they kidnapped from villages of Africa to sell in the European slave market. Much of the wealth that was generated by these journeys was done so by claiming human beings as a form of property. The Portuguese next set their sights on India. When Portuguese explorers, including the famous navigator Vasco da Gama, reached India in 1498, they found a highly developed Indian Ocean commerce offering commodities unavailable in Europe, such as colorful washable cotton linens, finely crafted porcelain, and tea. Wealthy Europeans coveted these new commodities, and the demand for valuable items from India grew. At the time, it was nearly impossible to travel from Europe to Asia over land. To access India, Portuguese explorers traveled by ships all the way down the coast of Africa, around the Cape of Good Hope, and up into India. The voyage took a very long time. A better route was needed. At this time, there was a young Italian-born explorer named Christopher Columbus. He had a different idea for a route to India. Instead of going around the continent of Africa, 
He proposed Europeans could take the Northwest Passage to arrive on the Asian continent. As a student of geography, he presented this idea of a new route to the wealthy king of Portugal. When the Portuguese king denied to fund his journey, he turned to Spain. Spain's rulers at the time, Queen Isabella of Castile and King Ferdinand of Aragon, were devout Catholics and well into their pursuit of making Catholicism the only religion in Spain. This lofty and often violent pursuit was expensive for the Spanish royalty. So, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella agreed to sponsor Columbus's trip with the agreement that he would bring back gold and spices in return. In 1492, Columbus and his crew boarded three ships, the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. Their intended route was west from Spain and then north through the Northwest Passage before heading down and passing Russia and landing among the East Indies. The East Indies are comprised of several countries including the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. While this route was logical, Columbus was off on his calculation of the circumference of the Earth. In other words, he thought the size of the Earth was much smaller than it actually was. Two months into their journey, Columbus and his crew made landfall, but not in the East Indies as they had intended. So where did they wind up instead? They actually landed in the Caribbean islands, specifically on an island in the present-day Bahamas. Columbus didn't know that the continents of North and South America existed, and therefore initially mistook the land as being part of the East Indies therefore incorrectly calling the people he met living on the land Indians. The people occupying the land were those of the Taino tribe. Historians believe the Taino people settled in Central America around 400 BCE and had developed their own complex political, religious, and social systems. They were skilled navigators themselves and had a thriving agricultural system. In their native language, they created music and wrote poetry. Speaking of the language of the Taino people, if you've ever snoozed in a hammock, enjoyed barbecue food, paddled a canoe, baked a potato, or tracked a hurricane, you have spoken words of the Taino language. These words, along with many others, were all invented long before Christopher Columbus arrived in 1492. From the perspective of the European explorers, this land was new. It later became referred to as the New World. It was during this time that the explorers adopted the concept of colonization to the New World, the action of settling among and establishing control over the indigenous people of an area to benefit and enrich the colonizers. Columbus and his crew did not find an abundance of gold and silver as they had hoped, but believed that with enough searching, they may still find the riches they set out to discover and bring back to Europe. Columbus spent months traveling back and forth among the Caribbean islands in search of precious stones and gold and silver he had promised the king and queen of Spain. Unable to find any riches, Columbus left his brothers to manage a colony they named Hispaniola, and headed back to Spain. But now, back to the perspective of the Taino people. After nearly 1800 years of living among their own people on this land, foreign European travelers appeared one day by ships to their land. The strange visitors carried weapons unknown to the Taino people, including both guns and swords. The Taino tribe was later forced to work on plantations and search for gold. They were also exposed to diseases from Europe that had not yet existed in the Americas. Between the harsh enslavement of the Taino people by the Spanish colonizers and the introduction of diseases such as smallpox, most people of the Taino tribe were killed by the mid-1500s. In total, Columbus made four trips from Spain back to the Caribbean islands. On his second trip, Columbus continued to look for gold, but this time he had a larger crew because he had enslaved the indigenous Taino people of the Caribbean islands. Unable to find any precious stones or gold, Columbus sent the Spanish king and queen 500 enslaved people from the islands. This is the first known shipment of enslaved people across the Atlantic Ocean and it's not clear how many survived the difficult journey. We now know that the areas we call North and South America have been inhabited by Native Americans long before Columbus was even born. 
and Columbus never actually made it to what is now the continental United States. Instead, he traveled to the Caribbean in 1492 and 1493, and made his way to Central America in 1502 and 1504, before he died in 1506. He was never aware of how close he truly was to the huge landmasses of North and South America. So, if Christopher Columbus and his crew weren't the first to discover the Americas, why is the explorer so famous? Many believe that his journeys were important because he was the first European of his day to sail the New World. Although, of course, we now know that Viking explorers had landed in North America 500 years earlier. From Columbus's perspective, along with the rest of Europe at the time, happening upon the Americas paved the way for further exploration of the region. At the time, more land meant more wealth and power, so many kings and queens of Europe rushed to claim land and began to colonize. This conquering and colonizing of the Americas would change the world, unfortunately at the detriment of many indigenous people. It's time to practice what you learned about the new world and the European age of exploration in the Americas. And remember, stay curious and keep exploring. You never know what you might discover. Hey!